Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Margaret O'Brien, James Craig, Marsha Hunt, and Keenan Wynn in Lost Angel. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. The entire company of the Lux Radio Theater has been under a magic spell this week. We've fallen victim to the charm of Miss Margaret O'Brien, age seven. We have wooed her favor with ice cream cone and peppermint candy. And she has rewarded us by treating us as equals. That's about the greatest compliment that a child can pay to adults. Co-starring with Margaret are James Craig, Marsha Hunt, and Keenan Wynn. They were all with her in the Metro Goldwyn Mayer picture, Lost Angel, the drama that takes the spotlight in this theater tonight. This week, Metro Goldwyn Mayer is celebrating 20 years of fine picture making with a new one that's been much talked about, the White Cliffs of Dover. During those 20 years, the studio has discovered a distinguished line of famous artists, but none, I think, more promising than our little Margaret O'Brien. Lost Angel is a delightful story of a very small girl who feels a certain responsibility for the affairs of her friends, particularly affairs of romance. I believe tonight marks rather a special occasion for the Lux Radio Theater because it's the first time we've had a star who wasn't born, even when the first play was presented in this national theater by Lux Toilet Soap, which means that a whole generation has more or less grown up with our program. The first birthday party, the first date, graduation day, in all of these, our product has played its own little role. Needless to say, we're firm believers in the theory that beauty is never too young to learn about Lux Toilet Soap. Now our cast is on the stage, and here's the curtain for Act One of Lost Angel, starring Margaret O'Brien as Alpha, James Craig as Mike, Marsha Hunt as Katie, and Keenan Wynn as Packy. Mike Regan. Mike's a reporter. He doesn't wear his hat on the back of his head, cigarettes never dangle from the corner of his mouth, and he has never considered writing a novel. But in spite of these handicaps, Mike Regan is the most promising news gatherer on the New York Morning Transcript. Right now, in fact, he's promising something to a very bewitching young lady. And I'm awfully sorry, Katie, but we can go next week, huh? That's a promise. Well, if you have to work, chum, you have to. It's that Packy Roos case. The cops just grabbed him, and I've got to do a follow-up story. Okay. Next week, then, huh? Katie, you're a wonderful girl. You know what I like best about you? Sure. I have a pretty good voice that pays off with a pretty good salary from a pretty good nightclub. <laughs> I don't cost you much. Uh, you'll find it hard to believe, but that's not it. The thing I like most is that you're not one of those whiny, clinging vine dames who squawks hey, when Mike, a guy's got work to do. Oh, hiya, Katie. Hi. Uh, the boss wants to see you, Mike. Tell him I'll be right there. Okay. Oh, hey, I almost forgot. Uh, about tonight, Mike, you bring the beer, we'll get the dame. Oh. All right, worm. Squirm. Honest, Kate, that's just a real darn in a dame. It's just a poker game. Oh, just a poker game. Well, it's not that I want to play poker, but I took 400 bucks from those pigeons last Tuesday night and... Tuesday night? Yeah. Oh. Yes. Oh. Oh, uh, look, look. Last look. Tuesday night, you stood me up because the rewrite man was sick. Katie, in this racket, there, there are a lot of things a guy has to do. There are obligations. Obligations to what, Mike? You have only two real obligations. One is to your job, and the other is to me. And he seems to be flopping in both of them. Didn't Dell tell you I wanted to see you, Mike? All right, please. Look, Katie, Katie, you're, you're absolutely right, darling. Look, have dinner with me tonight. Really let me have it. Yeah, and while I'm making speeches, you'll be figuring out how you can get away early and still make that poker game. Oh, no, Katie. I'll be listening. I'd be a heel if I didn't. You will come, won't you, darling? It means a lot to me. Well, I... Oh, that's wonderful, baby. You won't be sorry, Katie. Oh, all right. Pick me up at 8.30. 8.30? You're an angel. I'm a sap. 
Goodbye, Arthur. So long, Katie. Bye. Brother, the things you get away with. Uh, now then, you wanted to see me, Art? Yeah, when you went to Harvard, did you know a professor there named Vincent? Vincent? Oh, sure, psychology. He's in town now with the Pickering Institute. Then drag yourself down there and see him. They've got a baby genius. Get an interview. But, Art, I'm all tied up with the Packeroos case. Packy's in jail. The case is over. Now quit stalling. Listen, will you? I'm in no mood for the patter of little feet and the clutch of little hands. No? Okay. There's a poultry show that has to be covered. Pickering Institute? Pickering Institute. Yeah. That's what I thought you said. I'm on my way. I'm delighted to see you again, Regan. But as far as the child is concerned, impossible. You're by no means ready to contact the press. Oh, I understand your point of view completely, Professor Vincent. Imagine the cheap, sensational stories that might be written. Professors grow genius in hothouse, that sort of thing. Exactly. But after all, you know me, and you know oh, I wouldn't... very well, but the article you write must first be submitted to us for our approval. Oh, sure, sure. Now, where's the kid? Uh, just a moment. There are certain facts I first wish to make clear. For years, the Pickering Institute searched for a child upon whom we could make certain experiments that may revolutionize the entire educational system. Yeah, yeah. Six years ago, when Alpha was three days old, she was brought to us by the foundling home. Any records of her parents? None whatsoever. We chose her because we found her physically and mentally perfect for our purpose. Uh, since then, the Pickering Institute has been Alpha's home. Here she has had every attention, every kindness. And you've given her the work, huh? We have been her teachers and her friends. Alpha knows nothing of the outside world, but her knowledge of such subjects as music, geometry, Chinese, and history may startle even you, Regan. I'm ready to be startled. Very well. Go inside and strip. <laughs> uh, I thought you said strip. I did. Dr. Woodring will examine you. If you're in good health, you may then have a short interview with Alpha. Uh, gee, thanks. <laughs> Her room, Regan. I'll leave you with her. Hello. Hello, Alpha. Oh, geometry, I see. Did you remember to bring the slide rule, Professor Vincent? How about me? Will I do instead? This is Michael Regan, Alpha, representative of the press. How do you do? How do you do? Not too long, please. Won't you sit down? Oh, thanks, thanks. What paper are you from? A transcript. Oh, reactionary, isn't it? Hmm? I suppose you read it every day? Just the editorials. I go over them with Professor Richards. And what do you think of our editorials? Oh, we find them amusing. <laughs> Have you prepared a list of questions you want me to answer? Well, I thought we'd just... We you... could begin by my giving you the schedule on my day. Well, that's fine. That's fine. Well, I have English first, then history, economics, algebra, Chinese, semantics. I'm beginning tomorrow philosophy because I'm six years old. Oh, congratulations. Uh, if you'll pardon my asking, what do you do just for fun? Well, I play chess and the harp and the piano. And of all the jolly things you do, Professor, what do you like best? Reading. I think I like reading best. Sure. When I was your age, I liked reading best, too. You know, kid stuff, fairy tales. Oh, I've been told about them. Oh, what's wrong with fairy tales? After all, there's no point in wasting time on things that aren't true. And just... And just what isn't true about fairy tales? Are you serious? Dragons, flying carpets? They're not true? Hardly. Well, I guess I'll have to tell the leprechaun I had breakfast with it. He isn't real. A leprechaun? What's that? Oh, uh, oh it's a, a little man about so high. Irish. Shoemaker by profession. You had breakfast with such a man this morning? Mm, yes, yes. Well, what did he eat? Pratted and stir about. Oh, the stir about the special kind of cereal. No lump. What about dragons? Do you believe in them? Why, certainly. You've never seen one. Now, if that isn't just like a woman. Look, do you know what a zebra is? Of course. It's a mammal of the equine group. Black with white stripes. How do you know? Well... Well, because I do know. But you've never seen one? No. Still, you believe there are zebras, don't you? Yes. All right, then. I believe there's a whole world of magic. Outside, all kinds of magic. You do? Sure. Of course, some people will tell you that it isn't true. But if you know in your heart what you're looking for, and you believe it, then it is true. 
And you can find it. Can you? Certainly. Time for your... I'd like to. Elsa? Oh, but Professor, we're having such an interesting discussion. Well, so on, kid. And thanks. I'll be sure to tell my leprechaun you said he wasn't real. Goodbye, Mr. Regan. Come along, Elsa. Professor Caddy's waiting for you. I'm afraid we'll have to start again, Elsa. The note is D, not D flat. I don't believe I'm concentrating, Professor Caddy. Well, we'll try it again, dear. Ready? Professor Caddy, do you believe in magic? Magic? Well, uh, there's always the magic of music. Oh, but that's not what I mean. Oh, well, let's get back to days open. <laughs> I just wanted to say good night, my dear. Good night, Professor Benson. Where is Mrs. Caddy? Uh, Mrs. Caddy seems suddenly to have uh, contracted a slight fever. Dr. Woodring has sent her to bed. I'll go right to sleep. I'll try, but I have so many things on my mind. Oh? Uh, did you have a nice supper tonight? Well, you know, just lumps. Uh, lumps are merely grains of cereal adhering. Obviously, but sometimes I'd like to have Patties and stir about. What on earth are they? I don't know, but that's what I'd like to have. Well, I'll consult Dr. Woodring. Professor Vincent? Yes? If somebody told you something is true, and you don't think it is, but you're not sure, what can you do? You demand that they prove their statements. Everything true can be proved. Thank you. Good night, Professor. Good night, my dear. You've been a fine, good girl. that they prove their statements. If you know in your heart what you're looking for and you believe it, then it is there and you can find it. Everything true can be proved. Then prove it. Prove it to me, Mr. Regan. Outside, all kinds of magic. Outside. All right. Outside, I'll go. Very well. Outside, I'll go. Dear Professor, I am going out. Do not worry. I have dressed warmly. I have to find out something else. Well, young lady, what can we do for you? I'd like to see Mr. Michael Regan, please. Is, uh, is this guy with you, this uh, Chinese gent? Oh, yes. The traffic confused me somewhat, so he volunteered to escort me. Huh? Oh, she got the young man, Kauli. She gave the young man. So we knew the way up to bug one. Oh, my young man, oh, she got the... Hey, what goes? Oh, pardon me. My friend, Mr. Mean Jane, said the career was taken by the Japanese in 1912. It was 1910, August 1910. 1910, huh? Oh, now, come on. Now, what do you want to see Mr. Regan for? Uh, he's my father. Your father, though. What? I came. Jay Jim, that means goodbye. My friend, Mr. Mean Jane, is very kind to bring me here. But he certainly is stubborn. Who's the little doll, Eddie? He's looking for Mike Regan. Says he's her father. Mike Regan's her... Oh, boy. And she wants to see her father, does she? Well, I think that can be arranged. You know where he is? Sure, sure. He took his girl to the fight, and that's just where I'm taking this little lady. One at a time. Please, one at a time. Yeah, that's better. Now, which one of you professors called headquarters? Uh, it was I, Sergeant. I'm Professor Vincent. Okay. Now, you say you saw the little girl at 10 after 8. As a rule, my wife goes in to see if the child is properly covered. Why didn't she go in tonight? Because I ordered Mrs. Catty to bed. 
she's ill. Oh, I'll be all right. If only we can find Alpha. Hey, sir. Yeah, Charlie? I checked them all. Mercy Hospital, Good Samaritan, Bellevue, no kids. Are you sure you described her correctly? Navy jumper, white flowers, black shoes. But what made her run away? What made you her? You heard oh, me. Oh, we don't know. What's the matter with you, lady? My wife is suffering from a slight cold. <laughs> don't look like no cold to me. Hey, look, Sarge, this here lady's got the measles, Me? right? The father of nine kids. This is well, terrible. Measles? Oh, bless me, I believe you're right. Oh, this is calamitous. Oh, I'm sure I'll be all right in a few days. But you don't understand. Tell them, Doctor. When we find Elsa, she won't be able to come back here. This place is quarantined until Mrs. Catty recovers from the measles. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> Having fun, Katie? What? But I'd be happier if my man hadn't been knocked out. Ah, uh, the next bout will be on in a minute. I'll give you a chance to win your money back. Okay. But I have to be back at the club pretty soon. Oh, relax. I'll go over with you. After all, Attention. I... Attention. Attention, please. Mr. Michael Regan is wanted in the press room. Your baby is waiting for you. Mr. Michael Regan, your baby is in the press room. <laughs> Well, what are you waiting for, Mike? Oh, Katie, you know I haven't got a baby. Mister, I've never seen you before in my life. Oh, there's some mistake. Look, just wait, will you, honey? I'll be right back. I'm leaving, but you'd better hurry and see if that baby will wait for you. Oh. <laughs> right in the press room, Mr. Regan. Your boss brought her here and ducked out. Uh, thanks. Hello, Mr. Regan. Since when am I your father? Mr. Regan, I'd like to talk to you. And I'd like to talk to you. When you came to see me, you made certain statements. You said that there were dragons and flying carpets and, well, magic. And you said not everybody could, but you knew how to find it. That's what you said. So? Show me. But, of course, if it wasn't true, please don't feel bad. Of course, all men lie. Hmm? Even... Even if they don't mean to lie, they don't always know the truth about things. Oh, well, uh, uh, tell me, why is it so important to you, this magic business? Well, the professors say everything can be explained. But if things happen like magic, I don't know. I just thought it would make everything seem different. Listen, I didn't lie to you. There is magic, all kinds. It's what makes people laugh and have friends and be happy. And if I told you I could find it... Well, I'll find it for you. Now? Right now? Yeah, but we've got to find Katie, too. Oh, it's Miss Mallory. She's my girl. Oh, why don't we just go look for the magic? Why do we have to see her? Well, because she's very angry with me. And since you're the other woman in this case, well, you have to help me fix it. All right. How do I do it? You do it by being exactly six years old. That appears very simple, Mr. Regan. Shall we proceed? Yeah, we shall proceed. In a few moments, Mr. Bennell presents Margaret O'Brien, James Craig, Marsha Hunt, and Kenan Wynn in Act Two of Lost Angel. And now, here's a young soldier home on leave. A soldier and a girl. When your heart goes bump a bump it's love, love, love When your throat comes up with a lump It's love, love, love Why, Joe, you're not singing. I'd rather watch you, honey. You're so pretty. Where'd you get that million-dollar complexion, Sue? It makes my heart go bumpity-bump. Well, it's love, love, love. Sometimes at first sight, when admiring eyes come close to a smooth, lovable Lux complexion. Pretty Lux girls are clever. They never neglect the care that really makes skin softer, more appealing. Here's what they do. Every single day, I give my skin an active lather facial with Lux soap. I smooth on lots of the creamy lather and work it in gently but thoroughly. I rinse with warm water and splash on cold, then pat my skin dry with a soft towel. That's all. But that quick, easy facial really does things for my skin. In recent tests of Lux toilet soap facials... Actually, three out of four complexions improved in a short time. Lux Soap's rich, creamy lather agrees with delicate skin. No wonder nine out of ten lovely screen stars depend on it for daily complexion care. If you haven't tried this fine white soap, 
Why not get Lux Toilet Soap tomorrow? If you find your dealer is temporarily out of stock due to wartime conditions, he's sure to have more soon. Remember, Hollywood Beauty Soap is worth waiting for. And now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. Act two of Lost Angel, starring Margaret O'Brien as Alpha, James Craig as Mike, Marsha Hunt as Katie, and Keenan Wynn as Packy. <laughs> the New York police and professors of the Pickering Institute frantically search for a six-year-old brain trust. Mike Regan and Alpha are on a search of their own for magic. Under a dazzling canopy of animated electric signs, a slightly bored Mike and a sorcerer-eyed little girl amble through the wonderland of Times Square. Professor, I believe you wanted to see a flying carpet. Just take a look up there. Looks like an airplane to me. And just what is an airplane? Well, it's the thing that you sit down on and it flies away. Correct. Now, that plane up there, you sit down on it, it flies away. A flying carpet, no matter what you call it. Goodness. Hey, hey, take a look down there. See that man all dressed up? Swallowtail coat, silk hat? Now, look at his shirt. It lights up. Why, well, a shirt lights up with electric light. Certainly. It says, Bell Terra Cigars, the Smoker King. My, that's wonderful, Matt. Ah, uh, strictly minor league, Professor, minor league. Nice, fresh, oh. fine. Huh? One bag, Mac. One bag, one dime. Here you are. Keep the change. I remain obediently yours. What's this, Mr. May? Popcorn, uh, kind of food. My leprechaun's crazy about it, but it gets in his teeth. He has a lot of trouble with it. My teeth are very good. I see. Have some popcorn? Thank you. Wait. Here we turn the corner. And look. The great white way out. Full of magic. Mr. Regan, look. There's a dragon. Where? Oh, oh, sure, sure. All lit up like a Christmas tree. Dragon Chinese restaurant. Full course dinner. 70 cents. And look. Look at that. A leprechaun. Looks like a monkey to me. Now, if this were just a monkey, he wouldn't be all dressed up, would he? And asking for money with one hand and popcorn with the other? If he's if a leprechaun, he shouldn't have popcorn. It's bad for his teeth. Yeah, but you can still give him the nickel. Here, leprechaun, but no popcorn. It's for your own good. Now, uh, come on, Professor. We got to go to our nightclub and see Katie. I hope the leprechaun doesn't think that I didn't want to give him any popcorn. I'm sure he does. Now, if you keep your eyes open, you'll see a machine that makes donuts and a giant I mean, I know named Stilts. You see, Professor, on every street, behind every door, wherever you look, nothing but magic. Dotty, Dotty. Yeah, yeah, but before we go another step, I'm going to call Vincent and tell him where you are. singing. Hello, Chris. A uh, glass of milk for the professor here, and the usual for me. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Regan, this Katie, what makes her your girl? Well, I, I, I like her. How do you know when you like people? Well, it's because you want to be with them, I guess, and do things for them. Do you do things for her? Well, uh, not very much, I guess. Then you don't like her very much. Sure I do. And I don't understand. Yeah, you're too young. Well, Mike, and where did you borrow her? You can apologize now or later. She's the baby I was paged for. Sit down, Katie. You bet I will. Katie, this is Alpha. How do you do? Hi. Alpha's a business acquaintance of mine. She's being educated by a lot of professors, and they're doing a very good job, except they left out what goes on outside their classrooms. You know, magic and stuff like that. So she looked me up at the fights to find out more about it. Magic, huh? Yeah. Milk for the child and the usual for you, sir. Thanks. What's in that bottle, Mr. Regan? This? Oh, it's a uh, <clears throat> cough medicine. Then why does it say Irish whiskey on the label? Because he forgot you could read, Alpha. May I have some? No. It makes you feel awful. Well, sick, sort of. You know what's going to make you sick before you drink it? And you drink it anyway? That isn't intelligent, Mr. Regan. Oh, 
Okay, Professor, you win this round. Mr. Regan, what is that man eating? Hmm? Over there? Oh, he's eating spaghetti. Uh, I'll get you some. No, better not, Mike. She'll get sick. I am never sick. Okay, kid, you're on your own. Uh, some spaghetti for the young lady, Chris. Coffee for her. Yes, sir. I can see I'm going to have to watch my IQ around here. Do you have a high intelligence quotient? No, I'm a middle grade moron. That's too bad. Does it worry you? You think it should? Well, it would be a matter of concern to me. Excuse me a minute. I've got to find out about my next number. Are you going away? Yes, but I'll be right back. She's pretty. She's beautiful. Do you like her better than you like me? Huh? Well, look at you. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. Professor, you're getting younger every minute. Do you like me? Why? Because I like you. Why? I don't know. Hey, hey, what's the matter, Professor? What did I do? Now, you can't do that. Now, look. What did you do to her? All right, Peter, what do you think I did? He likes you better than he likes me. Oh, come here, darling. Hey, what's the matter with her? Now, judging from my past experience, I'd say she's in love. Hey, where do you think you're going? Uh, to telephone the Institute. And if that line's still busy, I'm going to cut my throat. Look, Alpha, Mike doesn't like me better than you. Honest, just different me. People can like lots of people. People with big hearts, that is. Is Mike on a big heart? Well, it's bigger than his head. Well, here's your spaghetti. I'm still against the idea, but if you've got to eat spaghetti, I guess you've got to. Well, how is your spaghetti, Alpha? I found it very palatable. You did, huh? Oh, look, here comes Daddy. Yeah, I got the institute all right. Finally. <laughs> Mike, your face. What's the matter? Are they having you arrested for kidnapping? I wish that was all. Do I have to go right back? I'm sorry I cried. No, no, you don't have to go right back. Not for a couple of days, Professor. A couple of what? Uh, look, Professor, you're a little bit tear-stained. Cigarette. How about washing up? Cigarette. Oh, miss. Cigarette. Oh, oh, miss, uh, would you mind showing my friend here where the powder room is? I'd be glad to. Come along, honey. You come with me. Uh, I, I better stay here. You come back beautiful and surprise me. You will. All right. Now, what's the big mystery? The Pickering Institute extends its unbounding gratitude for finding Alpha. That's nice. They practically kissed me over the phone, but I can't take her back there. No? The joint's quarantined. Mrs. Cat has got the measles. <laughs> oh, Mike. Uh, it's not funny. <laughs> they want me to. Oh, Mike, that's so wonderful. I tell you, they're going to stick me with that kid. <laughs> Much as I love you, darling, I can't say you're the guardian type. It seems Professor Benson knows me from Harvard, the rat. Hey, <laughs> uh, Katie, look, look. Now, your place is close by, and you know Not I... a chance, Mike. Not a chance. But why not? Well, you're her fairy godfather, my friend. You're the fellow who said outside there's magic and excitement and wonderful people. Well, you've got to show her, Mike. No one else. Oh, but it's only for a little while. I'll spend a lot of time with her. Oh, you know? no. Did you see her eyes when she looks at you? Well, you've got to pay for that look, chum. And that means that you're going to sit up with her tonight if she gets sick on that spaghetti. And in the morning, you're going to fix her breakfast. Yep, this time one of your pigeons has come home to roost. And uh, speaking of pigeons... Well, goodbye, Alpha. Goodbye, and thank you very much. You're welcome. People are very interesting. People are just dandy. Get your coat. Are we going? Yes. Isn't Katie coming? No. I'm sorry if I was rude when I first met you. I hope I see you again. You will, darling. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Michael. Oh. Okay, Professor, this is my apartment. My bed's in there. It's yours. Are you angry, Mike? Not at you. At Katie. But you like her. Who says you can't get angry at people you like? Anyway, I don't like her. I, I, I love her. It's... How? Well, you get mad at them that way. I'm glad I'm going to stay with you. Oh, you are, huh? Now, now, look. I'm a busy man. I don't mind you staying here, but uh, you've got to play ball and stay out of my hair. Oh, you mean if I cooperate? Exactly. Very well, I will cooperate. And if you wish, I will play ball with you. Oh, well, uh, 
Now, now you go in there and get out of your clothes. Uh, you can sleep in one of my pajama jackets. I'm accustomed to washing before I retire. Well, uh, that's the door over there. Thank you. Hey, wash good now and all over. Who is it? Oh, oh, sure I'm still working for the paper. Hmm? What? He broke out of jail. Packy Roos broke out... Well, I... I was out with a kid story. But I can't forget it. I've got the kid here. I can't. Art, listen. Hello, hello. Oh. My, I feel peculiar. So do I. My stomach hurts. I'm going to be sick. Well, get back in there. Hurry. Now, don't get scared. It's just... Grand Hotel. Oh, yes, Professor Vincent. More instructions? Oh, yes. Oh, she's been in bed for hours. Bye. Look, look, Vincent. I'll call you back in the morning. Oh, yes, Vincent. No, Vincent. Uh, yes, Vincent. No. N- yes, Vincent. I will. Bye. How you doing, kid? I just did. Uh. <laughs> Good. Uh, just pretend you were a little seasick. I feel humiliated. Humiliated. I never had occasion to use the word before. Uh, you don't have any occasion to use it now. Now, nah, come on. Into bed with you. Now, look, Professor, I've, uh, I've got to go out for a little while. Uh, you won't be afraid if I leave you here alone, will you? Why, no. That wouldn't be intelligent, Mr. Beacon. Score one for Vincent. Well, now you go to sleep, and when you wake up in the morning, I'll be right here. Thank you. Good night. Goodbye. Good night, Good night Professor. <laughs> Get in there. Who are you? Alpha, who are you? Where's Regan? I don't know. When will he be back? Soon. What do you want? What's it to you? Obviously, you've been very badly brought up. Hey, who are you? I told you my name was Alpha, but you didn't tell me yours. Well, it's Packy. Packy Roos. You belong here, huh? Yes. Mm-hmm. If you're not angry with Mike, then whom are you angry? Oh, I ain't angry. I ain't angry at nobody. So why have you got that revolver? What is? Oh, that's a... That's a water pistol. It's a deadly weapon. If you're not angry with Mike, then whom are you angry? Now, look, will you please go back to sleep? You're just trying to change the subject. Look, uh, maybe you'd like me to read to you, huh? You, you got a book around here? There's a book on the table. Uh Mike bought it for me. Uh Uh-huh. Uh, fairy tales. Yeah, you see that, sister? That there says fairy tales. Okay. (laughs) Now, uh, if there's, uh, if there's any word you do not understand, you leave me know and I'll explain it to them. Very well. (laughs) Now, uh, this here's a story about a uh, Chinese night in Gale. You see? It's a bird. Go on. Once upon a time in China was a wonderful bird called a nightingale. They said it was the greatest thing in all the vast empire. 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 But one man had never heard of him. That was a, uh, a, uh, 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 C-A-V-A-L-I-E-R. Whatever that is. Cavalier. Okay, Cavalier. All right, then. Why ain't it imp here? Oh, Packy, it isn't the same at all. You see, the noun Cavalier is a French derivative that... Oh, well, go on with the story. Okay. Well, this cavalier went to the palace, and he said, Princess of the realm, from all points of the compass, tidings come to me of a wondrous bird, a Satan nightingale, that uh, wobbles the most beautiful straw. Poor little girl, Mr. Prince, 
said. But my Edeo, I know it well. It can sing gloriously. Well, keep going, sister. Ain't a bad story. Every evening when I finish my work, I go into the garden and wait for him under the elm tree. Packy, Packy, are you asleep? Well, it's about time. Mike, is that you, Mike? Hey, what are you doing up? Shh, a friend of yours came in. He's sleeping in that chair. Oh, fine. Yeah, I chased all over New York looking for packed roots, and my friends come barging in at 4 o'clock in the morning. But, Mike, that is... That is Packy. Who? Packy Root. I've been reading him a fairy tale. Fairy? Oh. Mike! Mike, speak to me. <laughs> We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille returns with Margaret O'Brien, James Craig, Marsha Hunt, and Keenan Wynn for Act Three of Lost Angels. And now, here's our Hollywood reporter, Libby Collins. My, Libby, you look positively starry-eyed. Who wouldn't, Mr. Kennedy? I've just been talking to Sonia Henny. What a break for you, Libby. With or without her skates, she's certainly lovely to watch. Is she as tiny as she seems when she's skimming over the ice? Here are the exact statistics, Mr. Kennedy. 110 pounds, 5 feet 2, and eyes that are sparkling brown. In fact, a sparkling person. She must have a great capacity for hard work. How does she do it, and yet look so fresh? All that grace and quickness is the result of talent and lots of hard work. Besides being the world's foremost figure skater, she's an accomplished ballet dancer. I watched her practicing. She's just beginning a new picture, you know. And she seems to be tireless. I've heard she goes into rigid training before every ice show and every picture. Yes, a careful diet and as much rest as she can get. And, Mr. Kennedy, of interest to all Lux girls... Being smart as well as pretty, of course Sonia is a Lux girl. <laughs> yes, she is a Lux girl. A girl who depends on Lux toilet soap for exquisite complexion care and for a luxurious beauty bath, too. She says a really soothing, refreshing bath is very important to her. Here's what she told me. A Lux Soap bath gives me a wonderful pickup. Leaves me so refreshed. You might say a Lux Soap beauty bath makes a girl feel perky as well as pretty. So many screen stars recommend it for a quick beauty pickup. They're keen about the rich, creamy Lux Soap lather. Leaves skin really fresh and sweet. And they love the nice perfume Lux leaves on the skin. Well, Libby, a Lux beauty bath is a little luxury we can recommend to everyone these strenuous days. Lux toilet soap is thrifty, too. Being hard milled, it lasts down to the thinnest sliver. So for women everywhere, here's a Hollywood tip. Make Hollywood's fragrant white beauty soap your daily bath soap, too. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. We'll have a whole quartet of stars for a curtain call after the play. And here's the curtain for the third act of Lost Angels, starring Margaret O'Brien, James Craig, Marsha Hunt, and Keenan Wynn. After combing the city in search of packy roots, a weary Mike Regan has staggered home to find Alpha entertaining the escaped gunman in his living room. Packy had dozed off, but Mike's arrival brings him to his feet with a very mean-looking gun in his hand. Hey, what's the idea of busting into my place? Everybody in town's looking for you. Ah, shut up! Oh, Packy, put down that firearm. Well, I'm... I'm sorry. Now, look, Regan... I ain't guilty of that murder rap. They're trying to hang it on me. I never said you were guilty. There's only one guy who can clear me. Lefty Moran. That jerk? Yeah, Moran's seen the whole thing. I gotta find Moran quick or I wind up in the chair. Now, I can't go looking for him. But you can. So you're gonna find Moran for me, get it? Well, you hide out here. You got it, Regan. I'm sorry, pal. I got my hands full with the professor here. And I'm not making myself an accessory. Brother, harboring a felon makes you an accessory. And you're harboring me. I think you should help him. You stay out of this. Why? Because I like Cassie. You're getting to like an awful lot of people. 
Yes, it's getting easier and easier. All right. I'll try to find Lefty. But if I do, I get the whole story, exclusive, pictures, everything. Oh, sure, sure, but you're wasting time. I'll start in the morning. I'm dead tired. Brother, you don't know how dead you can be. You're starting now. Don't worry about Packy. I'll read to him tomorrow. Oh, murder. Yeah. Uh, what did I do to do this? What's the big idea coming back here if you didn't find him? Because I'm tired. I'm very tired. You told me that yesterday. Now listen to me, brother. You better go out and find... Hey, what's that? Oh, stop being so jumpy. It's just Katie with the groceries. Uh, you heard me, Foner. Hello, Katie. Well, good morning. Oh, who are you? This is Packy. Packy, this is Katie. Nice girl. Well, I'm uh, very pleased to meet you. I uh, don't mean to be inquisitive, but aren't the police looking for you? Mm, sort of. Oh, yes. It's all a misunderstanding. You see, the police have gone on the assumption that Packy is an antisocial type. But, of course, they're all wrong. You can just tell that by looking at him, can't uh, you? Look, kid, let's you and me lug these groceries into the kitchen, huh? Hey, Regan. What? You gonna stand around here all day? Get going. Oh, why don't you stop, you big bad man? Hi. The telephone is ringing. Oh. Hello. Oh, hello, boss. No. No, I'm not going to sleep all day. I'm just going out. Yes, yeah, sure, sure. Right away. Oh. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's awfully funny. My paper's yelling. I gotta play nursemaid. And this character is turning my place into an Alcatraz annex. Oh, fix some breakfast, will you, Katie? Uh-uh. I want to watch you. Then at least get the professor started with the lesson. Vincent sent up all her books. What? And reveal my ignorance still more? Well, somebody's got to help. Packy, go on. Give, uh, help the professor with the homework. Me? Oh, gee, I, I didn't bring my thinking cap with me. Packy, you heard him, didn't you? Oh, gee whiz. I... <laughs> Napoleon had had better equipment, and if the French people hadn't been discouraged by the length of the war... Well, go on, go on. You're not listening. Well, where's Regan? Him and that dame left here six hours ago. My city would be lucky back in Will. I never should have let that dame leave with him. How do I know what she's up to? You've got to relax. Oh, now, please. I heard all your lessons, didn't I? I even promised I'd let you learn me to harp. So now I can't relax. Will you have a heart? I'm jumpy. Now, Packy, the very wise men in India worked out a theory which will help you to relax. It's called yoga, and I'm going to show you. Who is it? Uh, it's me. Hey, give me a hand, will you? Hey, it's Lefty. What'd you do, croak him? I don't know where I could get him here. Had to tap him a little on the head. Come ah, on. Drop him in his chair. There. Hey, hey, he's coming too. Oh. Hey. Mike, is that gentleman hurt? Is he? All right, close the door and get that kid out of here. Oh. Where? The Packy. Yeah. Take a good look, sweetheart. Hey. Hey, what's going on here? I had to see you, Lefty. You wasn't just a witness to that shooting, was you, chum? You was a kid himself. Well, no one's framing me. Oh, wait a minute, Packy. I can... Are you I... crazy? He's no good to you, Dad. Make him sign a confession. Then we can call the cops. But if you pay him off with a load of lead, then you're just buying yourself a one-way ticket to Sing Sing. Oh, Packy, don't do anything that'll make you go to jail. I wouldn't be able to see you anymore. And besides, you promised me that you'd show me how to shoot dice and shuffle cards and... Well, all right. Get out that typewriter, Regan. There's a nightingale here that wants to wobble. Hello? Oh, yeah. Vincent? Yeah, she's fine. Huh? Oh, that's great, great. Well, I can't do it right now, but... Oh, sure. That'll be okay. In about two hours? Oh, you better make it three. I got a little business to take care of. Yeah, okay. Now what? Alpha. Yes? Uh, Vincent's uh, coming to get you in about three hours. The quarantine's been lifted. Oh. You ready, Regan? Yeah, shoot. Okay, Moran. Start singing. I'll talk, Maggie. I'll talk. The apartment's slightly untidy, Professor Vincent, but they've been entertaining some unexpected guests here. Why, this place is a shambles. 
Professor, we caught a gangster. And the cops came, and now Packy won't have to go to jail, and... Regan, what is this child talking about? You'll find the whole story in the morning transcript, exclusive with pictures. Left of Moran confesses murder. Cops rush down. Packy Roos goes free. And I get the hottest break in six months. You should have been here. You, you unprincipled man. Is this the care with which you watched over Alpha? Gangsters, criminals. Why, you're no better than one yourself. Don't you dare talk that way to Mike. I hope it gives you some satisfaction, Mr. Regan. To realize that you've probably ruined years of work. But believe me, you haven't heard the last of this. Oh, yes, I have. The very last. Get out of here. Alpha, dear, they're all waiting for us downstairs, all the professors. We can go home now. But I can't leave, Mike. I think you'll have to, Alpha. But I can't. Look, Professor. You came to me so I'd show you magic, didn't you? Well, I showed you lots of magic, didn't I? Now you've got to go back. The professors are your friends. You've always liked the Institute. But I never got to go outside it. But you will. Just as soon as you're old enough. And there'll be more magic. And more people to like. But Mike, it's different when you love people. It's not the same as liking them. But you don't have to be with people to love them. Oh, Mike. Yes, you do. Regan. Yeah? If I spoke harshly, I'm sorry. Perhaps I was... Will you please get out of here? But, Mike, yes, you do. Tell him. Tell him, Katie. Come, Alpha. Come, my dear. Mike, Mike. So long, Professor. You going to let her go, Mike? Just like that? What else could I do? I didn't hear you tell a kid you'd be by to see her or anything. I thought it'd be easier if I didn't. Easier for whom? For whom, Mike? For you or Alpha? All right, easier for me. Katie, you know I'm crazy about that kid. But a punk like that, she's a responsibility. Yes, I know. Katie, let's get married. Let's go someplace where it's nice and quiet. Let's just... Oh, I've been wanting you to ask me that for so long. Now, well, the answer's no, Mike. You see, I think I'd be a responsibility, too. I'd complicate your life, too, darling. You know I love you. Sure. But I don't like the way you love people, Mike. You run out on them. Katie, when my boss was here, he offered me a job in Washington. A job I'd been after for years. I told him, no, I wouldn't leave you. Does that sound like running out? Mike, when you love people, you owe them something more than just turning down a job. You've got to give something. A little of your freedom, maybe. Your time. Yourself, maybe. I don't know. But whatever it is, you're not willing to give it. I saw that when Alpha walked out that door. Just as I'm doing now. So long, Mike. Alpha, uh, Miss Mallory has come to visit with you. Now, if something hurts you, if you don't feel well, uh, won't you tell us what it is? But I'm not sick, Doctor. Measles. Do you suppose she caught Mrs. Caddy's measles? Oh, if it were only that simple. You know, uh, Alpha's been back with us now for nearly a month. You know, it's something else. I, I don't just know what. I have an idea, Alpha. Let's show Miss Marlowe how you do problems. You just put those blocks into their proper spaces as fast as you can. Now, I'll time you. Ready? I'd rather not. Oh. Uh, would you uh, like to have me read to you? No. We could go out, Alpha, uh, take a nice walk, you and I. No, no, thanks. Darling, would you like to see Mike? Yes, but he doesn't want to see me. Alpha, uh, just what was the nature of the magic Mr. Regan showed you? Oh, there were lots of things. There was a fine carpet, and there was a man whose shirt lighted up, and there was a leprechaun. Oh, but that wasn't the real, real magic. That was just the little kind. Well, what was the real magic, darling? Loving people. The way you love Mike? Yes. Excuse me, Professor Vincent. Yes, Mrs. Caddy? There's a person here asking for Alpha. A Mr. Roos. Uh, Packy Roos. Oh, uh, Miss Marlowe and I'll see him right away. Uh, just a minute, Vincent. Yes? Uh, this child is really ill, Vincent. If this goes on much longer, I can't be responsible. Yes, I know. Hey, is this where the little babe lives in this joint? How do you do? 
Katie, what are you doing here? She's sick, Packy. She's awfully sick. Oh, ain't anybody going to do something about it? Uh, we are doing everything we can. Oh, I, uh, I was just in the neighborhood. I brought her a couple little presents. Hey, Jake, back up the truck. <laughs> Packy, have you seen Mike? Yeah, yeah, I just left him. We've got to get him here right away. I don't think he can make it. He must make it. The child won't eat. She won't sleep. She, she misses him so, Packy. Well, I left him at Grand Central, Katie. He was getting on a train for Washington. Oh, no. Boy, well, that no good heel. Running out on her, trying to tell me she wasn't his kid. Washington. Now, wait a minute. You got a phone here, Jack? Certainly. Come in my office. Packy, what are you going to do? I sent a telegram. I'll call a railroad station. Stop the train. I don't know. But we got to do something and fast. <laughs> Mike, you did come back. Oh, I knew you would. Oh, my dear fellow, I'm so delighted to see you. Huh? What goes? You got my wire, huh? What wire? What do they do, page on a train? Well, they stop the train or what? Hey, what's the matter with you? What are you all looking so funny for? Uh, uh look here, Vincent. I, I want to talk to you about the professor. Mike. You came back here all on your own? Of course I came back on my own. Yeah, but the train, I seen you taking the train. Uh, I did a little thinking on that train. By the time we got to Trenton, I was through thinking. I got off and took the next train back. And you don't know what's happened? Well, what do you mean? Hey, what is this? What's wrong? Has something happened to Alpha? Well, she's been rather ill. We've been... Uh... What, what's the matter with her? Don't you know how to take care of a kid? Can I... Can I go out of town without something happening to her? Oh, my. Hey, where is she? I want to see her. Come with me. Hey. Hey, Professor. Yes? It's me, Professor. Mike. Oh, Mike. I'm so glad to see you. Hey, what kind of monkey business are you up to? What is I hear about you not eating or sleeping, huh? Oh, Mike. A fine thing. A fine reputation you're giving me. You stay with me a couple of days and you come back here and you're no good to anyone. Handkerchief, Packy? No, it's just hay fever. <laughs> you get me in Dutch with the professors and Kate is sore at me. And I just walked out on a new job. You can have me if you'd like, Mike. Me too, Alpha. If you'll have us. You bet I will. Well, Packy... What do you say? It's a lovely day, ain't it? Of tonight's stars, only James Craig has visited us before. And now Margaret O'Brien, Marsha Hunt, and Keenan Wynn join him in a curtain call. It's well being here, Mr. DeMille. Say, Marsha, did you know that Keenan Wynn has a wonderful name? Well, both he and his father have made it famous, Margaret. Tell me your whole name, Mr. Wynn. No, I don't think we have time. This is only an hour program. <laughs> we'll start on it anyway. Well, Francis Xavier Aloysius James Jeremiah Keenan Wynn. Gee, I always wondered, if yours name's that big, how long is your daddy? Ed. <laughs> we have a couple of fine athletes here tonight, too, Margaret. Did you know that uh, James Craig used to be a prize fighter? Were you as good, good as Joe Lewis, Mr. Craig? Well, I, I don't know, Margaret. Uh, I never fought him. Uh, he might have a slight edge. <laughs> <laughs> and then Keenan Wynn is a champion speedboat racer. I believe he holds the record for circumnavigating Manhattan Island in 39 minutes. I guess that's even faster than Columbus did it. By a slight edge. <laughs> Why aren't you in the history book? Well, there are lots of things that uh, aren't in the history books, Margaret. Good thing. There's Lux Toilet Soap, for instance. The product behind this program. Oh, I know all about Lux Soap. My mother makes me wash with it. <laughs> well, I, I knew you had a wise mother. I agree with Margaret's mother, too, Mr. DeMille. Lux soap is a grand way to take care of your complexion. Well, after seeing you two, who could doubt it? 
What have you planned for next week, Mr. DeMille? A delightful comedy, Marsha. The Paramount screenplay, Christmas in July. And our stars will be Dick Powell and Linda Darnell. Christmas in July is the story of a boy and a girl in love. And that's not likely to go out of style soon. But this particular drama has a gaiety and charm that make it a perfect way to welcome the coming of summer. I remember the picture had a lot of surprises, C.B. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. This is a four-star performance, if ever I heard one. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Dick Powell and Linda Darnell in Christmas in July. This is Cecil B. DeMille from Hollywood. And now, here's a question from Uncle Sam to housewives everywhere. If you had roast or stew or soup for dinner tonight, did you make sure that every drop of waste fat was poured into the salvage tin, even the burnt or black drippings from the roasting pan? That fat turned into your butcher tomorrow will be made into war materials and rushed to our fighting men. Perhaps it'll help to make the sulfur drug that eases a wounded soldier's pain or the tannic acid needed to treat his burns. There are countless other military uses for that waste kitchen fat of yours. It's needed for synthetic rubber, parachute material, and many life-saving medicines. Right now, the heavy fighting in France makes the need more urgent than ever. Before you throw away a single drop of used fat, think of that boy fighting in faraway lands whose very life depends on a constant, unceasing flow of supplies from home. To help shorten the war, to bring more of our men home safe, save all the waste fats you can. Put them in a tin can, rush them to your butcher. Remember, he gives you two free red ration points and four cents for every pound you turn in. Save meat drippings, table scraps. Every bit counts. Save every precious drop now, while our fighting men need your help so urgently. Heard in tonight's play were Stan Farrar, Griff Barnett, Norman Field, Regina Wallace, Ed Emerson, Lal Chandmira, Charles Seal, Herbert Rawlinson, Ferdinand Mounier, and Catherine Lewis. This program is broadcast to our fighting forces overseas through cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service. Our music was directed by Lois Silvers. And this is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear Dick Powell and Linda Darnell in Christmas in July. <laughs>